Hi everybody, this is Joe slash FizzleCC. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some tricks that I've been learning inside of Blender on how to quickly render out lots of different sprite sheets for your 2D game. It's gonna save you a ton of time if you're making any sort of four direction or eight direction players or enemies. And it's definitely something worth investigating for you inside of your games if that's the direction that you're gonna go. It's something that I'm actually using inside of the game that I'm working on right now, which is called Smash. Smash is actually a top-down twin stick shooter mostly based off of Smash TV, or inspired by it. I'm collaborating on it with Let's Talk Game Design, so you can actually go over to his channel, link down below in the description, and check out some of the devlogs that he's been doing already on that game. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump on in and see what sort of things we're working with. Okay, so we're actually inside of the preview of our current version of Smash. I'm gonna tease just a few things here. Um, most of this has already been shown inside of uh, Let's Talk Game Design's devlog. There's a few new updates here that we're, we're testing out. But um, this is, should paint the picture for you that we've got eight direction sprite sheet on the main character. You can see that he can have every 45 degrees, there's a animation for running or idle or his really, really cool slide, which I absolutely love. And we also are using some of those tricks on the enemies. Now we've chose a certain artistic style, um, but you can really play with that artistic style inside of Blender, which is one of the really, really cool things about um, going this direction. So with that said, now you get an idea of what we're gonna try to be creating here. Uh, let's go and see how we did it inside of Blender, but not before I uh, blow these guys up. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's close that out. So we're actually gonna use Mixamo.com to demonstrate how we did this. Um, we're gonna use the mutant model, uh, which you can go and pick out a different character and you can apply all these animations. And Mixamo literally has thousands of animations, which, which will save you a stupid amount of time. Highly recommend taking a look at it. You can upload your own models, use their auto rigger, and then re-download it with the animation applied. So in this case, if you were to come down and select this creature NPC pack and hit download, you would get a zipped folder with um, all these different FBX files, which includes the animations as well as the mesh of the mutant. You'll notice though, uh, that he's not staying in place in all of his animations. And in this example, I'm gonna do the run, idle, and dying just to demonstrate how to render these out. Um, it, when you go to the run by itself though, it gives you this option to check in place. And that's actually super helpful so that you don't have to worry about that inside of Blender and trying to move your camera with the character. So download the run, separately as well and check this in place and it will make it easier for you okay once you've done that you should have a folder with these fbx files in it so we're going to use blender now to open up both the mesh as well as the animations in a separate blender file and we're going to append those animations to the mesh and then render it out that sounds kind of complicated but let me walk you through it okay first things first i have a little bit of a starting template file already i just have the camera already pointing where i want it to point so I'm gonna go ahead and do file, import, FBX, and let's go to the mesh, which is right here, and hit import. You'll see right away that we get our cool looking dude in a T-pose, which is great, but it's not animated yet. So we have to take those other FBX files, which has the animation data, and actually apply it to this mesh. And I'll show you a quick trick on how to do that. So go ahead and open up another Blender instance and delete the cube and let's go ahead and import those other FBX files. Import FBX, navigate to where you saved it, and then we're gonna import, like I said, dying, idle, and run. Let's go ahead and hit import. And you'll see here that it's imported the bones without the mesh, and it's got this animation on uh, going on if I scrub the timeline down here. I know I'm kind of in the way but uh, you can see here that it's actually animating it. So what we need to do now is uh, save this out and then we're gonna append it to the other blend file. So let's go ahead and hit file, save as, let's call it um, mutant animations. I already did this once, so hit save. You'll notice though that if you come into the armature inside the scene collection, that the animations have really bad names. So this one is dying. So let's go ahead and rename this to dying, because this is gonna make our life easier. If you go to the next one, I think this is idle. Yeah, that's idle. Okay, so let's rename this to idle. And then let's go to the next one, and by process of elimination, this is going to be run. All right, so we have idle, dying, and run. 
So let's go ahead and hit save again, and then let's navigate back to our other blend file where we have our character. So we're gonna do an append now. This is kind of where the magic happens. Um, hit file, append. Uh, let's go ahead and I've already navigated to it. Hit your mutant animations.blend, hit append, go to your actions and select the animations that you would like to add into this blend file. So go ahead and hit append. And now if you navigate over to your dope sheet and select your action editor, you'll be able to actually apply each animation to your armature. So make sure your armature is applied and select the animation from right here that you would like to apply. Let's start with dying. And now you can see, well, boom. Okay, <laughs> so it's working, great. Now, one quick trick that you wanna make sure you remember is make sure to hit this little shield here, which is the fake user. That way, if you save your blend file and then reopen it, it's still there. Otherwise, you'll have to re-import it each time. So go ahead and hit this and then push down. And that's actually going to push it down onto the NLA track of the armature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select each of our animations and we're gonna do the same thing. So let's go ahead and hit the shield, which is fake user, push down. And then let's go to the last one, which is run, hit the shield, which is fake user and push down. So we have our armature with three animations on it, dying, idle and run. Great. So if I were to go ahead and hit F12 right now, which is the shortcut for render, this is what it would look like. All right, that's kind of cool. I have it fairly re low resolution. I have it at 256 by 256. You can control your render output properties underneath um, this render properties tab. And you can see up here, you can select all sorts of different things. Um, there's a lot of really cool artistic stuff that you can do here that I'm not gonna cover. We do that inside of our game. There's different shaders, there's different um, <laughs> uh, things that you can do in comp compositing that you can do using cycles. And you can get really, really creative and add your own unique flavor. And if you're using asset packs, I heavily recommend you figuring out how to make it all cohesive like we were doing by using your own style. And we're using Blender's work uh, flow to do that using shaders and compositing so that all of our rendered views have kind of that same look and feel. So we're not gonna go into that today, but know that there's a lot of things that you can uh, play with here. Um, the other thing to note is that I could underneath this output here, go in and select my resolution and change it. I could set my frame start and end. I could say how often I want it to step. Do I want it to be every frame or every other frame would be two. And I could select my output folder and I could hit, you know, not just F12, but go ahead and hit render animation, control F12. And it would render out to the folder that you selected the whole animation and you're good. You've got it. But we want to show you how you can quickly do it for four direction and eight direction. And that's going to take a script. Now, Blender lets you script with Python, which is super cool. And I'm going to share this with you in a download on itch. So you can copy and paste it into your own blend file. Now, there's a lot of different uh, tutorials already out there and content online on how to do scripting, but I'm gonna give this to you as a template that you can use for your own projects. All you have to do in here is select the armature that has the animations on it and hit run, and it will output every eight directions, every action into its own separated folders, and then you can just dump it into your game engine, which saves tons of time. So. I've already run this and I'm just going to show you what it kind of looks like. So you can see here when I ran it, each one of these folders, I have my run animation, I have east, north, northeast, let's select northeast. You can see that I rendered out the whole run cycle of the player, or sorry, of the creature or the mutant or whatever. And I have all of these organized in nice clean folders and the script did all this for you. And so rather than going through and like manipulating the armature to turn 45 degrees, and then hit run animation and render out it again. This is doing all that for you. It organizes all of it. And inside of the script, I'll give you a quick walkthrough now that you know what it's doing. Um, there's three areas that you have to pay attention to. So after you've selected where the, the actions are stored, which is on this armature, you have to make sure that you can add or subtract the names of the animations that you want. So you can keep adding it. Say you had something called like attack one. You'd put that right there and make sure that everything that you want to have rendered, you include there. If you don't want something, you can use control forward slash and it will comment it out, right? So make sure that you have everything listed here that you want it to process. And then this is uh, where you can control which angles you want. So say you don't want 
eight directions. Say you only want, you know, four directions. Well, it would be zero, 90, 180, and 270. And if you comment out those other four, it's only gonna render these four angles, which is east, north, west, west, and south. That's simple enough. And then the last thing you have to do is you have to make sure that you add the output folder. So put something on your hard drive, I called mine mutant on my temp folder, and that's where it dumped everything. Now, once you've done all that, you can hit the select this, hit the run, and it will start. Um, the other thing I will tell you is you noticed that there was probably a lot of frames inside of my run animation. Maybe that's too many. It might be too memory intensive. Inside of the script, if you want to, you can change it to be instead of every uh, one, I was playing with it, um, you can actually change this to be every other, which would be two, or every third, which would be three, or every fourth, which would be four. If you do that and hit run, you can go ahead. I think this will actually overwrite most of my things. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out and you can guys can kind of see it run. Let me delete all these. 2,323 frames. All right, we're gonna do every fourth, which is just to make it go fast and to demonstrate it. So let's hit run. It will start running. We should see, yep, so it created a dying folder. It already worked through these. So now it's much fewer uh, animation frames and that will help you on your memory. And you can dial in exactly what you want. And that is the magic of using this script in Blender to quickly process some pretty awesome characters. So it's already done. Um, it only processed four directions because I toggled off those other four, right? So it went east, north, south, west. So now you can go and whenever you make an update to your model, say you didn't like the color and you wanted to adjust the hue, you can do that and rerun it and redump it into your engine and you're good to go. All right, everybody, hopefully that was useful for you. Check out the download link uh, below. It'll be on itch for the script. And also thank you to all my patient subscribers and supporters. If you like this video, please consider subscribing or giving me a thumbs up. It's free for you to do and it makes a big difference for me. Also, uh, keep looking out for more updates on Smash. I think it's going to be an awesome game. Really looking forward to collaborating with Let's Talk Game Design. It's already been a blast and I'm sure we're going to have lots of great content to come. So with that said, everybody, have a great day and I'll talk to you all soon.